I figure this is the best time of year for you and I to talk about the scariest haunted houses that you've ever been to. <laughs> That's right, friends. I am the man you may know, Z, from Our Reviews Will Kill You, and we're here to talk a little bit about the scariest haunted houses that you've ever been to. I saw an article today that I thought was pretty interesting, so I wanted to go over it, and I thought we could talk a little bit about your experiences and my experiences around some of the scariest haunted houses we'd ever been to. And then that would be fun to talk about, considering it's it's about that season, right? So let's take a look at the first article. See what's shaking a bacon. Here is the scariest haunted house leaves visitors stripped, shaved, and humiliated. I'm in total shock. That sounds like a Thursday night for me. Uh, but we'll take a closer look at it, right? This is from the Daily Mail. No? New York Post. I'm sorry. But it's... It's a psychological torture chamber ahead of Halloween. A haunted house is hitting headlines for hosting a series of sadistic seeming experiences, including verbal humiliation and electric shocks. I thought you paid certain women to do this for you. If you're a big famous corporate guy and you want to get your uh, junk squished, I thought that that's that was like normal stuff. But this is it's called Enola at the Scare Maze, located in Walsall, England is an 18 and over Halloween experience. So petrifying that people have to sign a two page waiver to enter. You may end up getting, let's see, get your head shaved. Look at that, you're gonna shave your head. Verbal abuse, electric shocks. And you know what, this reminded me of something else where I was like, uh, this isn't, this is nothing. Two page waiver, are you kidding me? Uh, but this Brit, he said he was taken aback after encountering naked actors inside the haunted house. <laughs> What'd they do? D dangle their dinglings in front of you? If you are easily offended, this experience won't be for you. Uh, worst of all, it's described as a bad trip to, trip on the site. A solo experience, which means visiting. You, you go by yourself. You ain't going with anybody else. And you leave wondering, WTF have I just experienced? Um, it apparently one best out of season experience. It sounds like a sadist shack that you just go to. I've been to every haunted house and Halloween experience. This is by far the most intense. We did it never again. But like I said, this reminded me of something else. This actually reminded me of... Uh, this guy in the States, his name was uh, McCamey, and I watched a documentary. This article is more than eight years old from The Guardian. At McCamey Manor, people pay to be kidnapped, bound, masked, slapped, stomped on, held underwater in an eight-hour tour. But unlike other extreme haunts of the same variety, there is no safe word to make it stop. This guy, if I remember correctly, has had to move like three or four times because people were not having his brand of craziness. It was it was too much for them. Uh it this guy this guy has an interesting story. Hold on, let's see if we can blow this up here for you. This dude, hilarious. Let's come on. Can we make this bigger? Anyway, uh, he is... If, if you just get basically abducted and then abused for the weekend, <laughs> Marines, cage fighters, cops, bikers, plumbers, and clerks, they all try. They all fail. Nobody seems to survive this thing. It's pretty funny. And, and again, this is eight years ago. Uh... And this is back, like I said, this is back in the old days. Half a dozen kidnappers are volunteers or actors who came originally as guests. That's the one thing I remember. They were all guests, and now they want to pass that suffering back on to others. 
it's, this place was crazy. Uh, they do all sorts of crazy stuff at you. They throw everything at you. And you pay $40 and sign 40 pages of waivers so that you won't you won't sue. Uh, but the owner of this, they don't talk. Yeah. The owner is Russ McCamey. And if you ever watch any of his documentaries, I the dude's hardcore. I, I don't know what his deal is. But he is uh he's something special. So special, in fact, that uh he had the charges against him back. Tennessee McCamey Manor. So he was chased out of California, right? He sees criminal charges against him dropped. So clearly he's done nothing wrong. Um this is modern times. We're back at this is as of uh September 2024, okay? He uh the, the, he, they claim the police allegedly claim and now the charges have been dropped, so they're they're clear. He's he's free and clear that he strangled a woman in, uh, allegedly identified as his girlfriend and may have added some other things that you know Grape flavored domestic altercations. How's that sound? Uh, so anyway, all of it, there's no evidence apparently, and uh, it's all been dropped to dismiss the charges. Just saying, this guy is he's something special. That's right, he had a Hulu documentary. I don't know when that came out, but I did watch it. So this guy, this guy's something special. So anyway, long story short, is these Brits have nothing to complain about. America does it more extreme, America. But what we're talking about haunted houses let's go let's go to what regular people want to see okay let's go back to what the normies want to do what i've done i don't want to, i don't want to go any further than this this is a forbes article seven of the world's scariest haunted houses i wish we would have kept just in the u.s um but most of them are in the u.s and i haven't heard of any of them and i'm going to tell you about my favorite haunted houses that happen to be local ones which i highly recommend that you do Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Oh, I know about this. They made a movie about this. This one looks genuinely cool. Like, I would genuinely like to go to this one. Uh, this one is, is pretty wild. It's a baffling labyrinth. It's this 160-room mansion, the Winchester. It's, it's the heir of the Winchester fortune. Uh, her husband died and she made this this house and she just kept randomly putting rooms onto it for no, in no particular rhyme or reason. There's 160 rooms uh, filled with occult oddities and there's trap doors and staircases that lead to dead ends. Uh, design schemes that incorporate the number 13. 13 candles in a, in a chandelier, 13 cupolas, 13 stones in a spiderweb like window. Sarah Winchester. Uh, so they made like a, they made a horror movie on this, and there's like a whole thing about her. It's haunted by ghosts because he invented the Winchester rifle, which is the gun that won the West. I definitely want to do that. That's ex that's exciting. I would go do that. Hellgate Haunted House in Lockport, Illinois. That is built on the land that was once a cemetery used to bury wards of the state whose bodies were not claimed by the family. Hidden in the woods, scare seekers go through 40 rooms and encounter 150 actors on any given night. Yeah, yeah. Duluth, Minnesota. The Duluth Haunted Ship. Oh, this is a modern article, right? These still exist? I thought it did. Yeah, 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 yeah. October 23rd, 2024. You, you still do these. Okay. Because I remember uh, the Winchester House. I thought it suffered from the, the Great Earthquake. I forget when that was. Long time ago. And uh, had a house fire too, but but it's obviously been saved. Uh, a haunted ship sounds cool. I'm down with that. Uh, 700 fit, foot vintage ore boat called the SS William A. Irvin. You have to graduate from scare school to do it. The Mortem Manor in Kissimmee, Florida. Uh, it's open all year round. It's a two store Victorian haunted house. Moving floors, animatronics. All right, all right. 13th floor haunted house near Denver, Colorado. 
Uh, yeah, sure. Seems pretty scary. It's three store uh, hidden bars are also behind. Secret doors. There's an arcade themed spookeasy. Yeah, that's not scary. These aren't scary. One or two of them are scary. Screamageddon in Pasco County, Florida. Um, spookers in <laughs> spookers in Auckland, New Zealand. Okay, it's open year round. It's a former psychiatric hospital. All right. Well, I'll tell you my stories. Um, let's go with the first one that I really like, which is uh, this is Penhurst Asylum, and it's a former insane asylum. And one of the cool parts of it is I, I distinctly remember. Now, now it's changed. I remember the first year that it opened, and I have no idea when that was. It was a couple of years ago. And everybody basically was an abandoned asylum, and somebody had bought it to turn it into a haunted house. And all I remember is they had they had all these bonfires because there's so many trees they had to chop down because the whole place had been you know, filled with trees and, and was no longer functioning, obviously, as a hospital. I think it was shut down in the Reagan era or what have you. And then you get... Um, now they've added all these haunted attractions. But the cool thing is people would go in and you would never see anybody leave. Well, the interesting part, at least in Pennsylvania, where the Penhurst Asylum is, you, all of the insane asylums would have underground tunnels that the people, uh, that, that the, apparently, that the National Guard would have access to in case there was a riot at the asylums. So you would see... You know, all these people would walk into this place and then nobody would leave, but that's because they were escorting everybody out through the tunnels. It was a lot of fun. I thought they did a great job with it. Now it's got all these other attractions. And uh, I highly, highly recommend it, especially considering the way that they used to keep people back in the day in, in the haunted asylums and all that. Or not haunted, regular asylums, what they used to do to people. Uh, the other one that's super interesting, and this one's in Philadelphia is the Eastern State Penitentiary, America's most historic prison. One of the reasons why I think it's so much, so interesting is because the actual, it was an actual prison, uh, home to such people as Al Capone. 85,000 people held over its long, um, long history, including bank robber Slick Willie Sutton and Scarface Al Capone. And it you could go just for the actual history of it, and it's pretty cool because it's based on the... Uh, uh, the penitentiary model by the Quakers, I think it was, who were like, oh, all you need to do is you could repent for your crime. You know, pray to God in a lonely cell where you can only see the sky and no one's really going to interact with you. And uh, I always found the historical tour to be more interesting than the actual haunted houses. But they do have haunted houses there as well. So if you're going to go do this one, I recommend you do both. You do Halloween nights and you go for like the regular tour because the regular tour is pretty freaky. Um, yeah, when you go through all the, the the different cell blocks and everything, I think it's pretty cool. People drop out of the ceilings and all sorts of stuff. But like I said, the actual tour itself, a lot of fun. I highly recommend it. Um, I think you would enjoy it. And you guys need to let me know what you've done. I want to hear about your haunted tales. I'll give one more story. And this is his real... Oh, I didn't even share the thing. Um, there we go. Uh, this is the actual um, Eastern State Penitentiary, which is in the heart of Philadelphia, real close to the art museum. And you can see all the different... Uh, you can go to, to the actual, like, the, the, the attractions, but you could take the historical tour, too, which I think is very cool. See, look at all the look at all these crazy. Uh, there's like five haunted houses or something on it, and uh, I think they're all pretty cool. But like I said, the actual trip, like the actual just going through it itself, is is a lot of fun. So let's talk about the one that I that I hold most dear and near to my heart, which is uh, Byberry Mansion, which no longer exists anymore. It was an old insane asylum. Uh, that a radio station used to host like a haunted house there every year. And this is, this is a long time ago. I'm probably dating myself a little bit. Um, but the place was crazy because one of my ex-girlfriends many, many years ago, 
she was actually and she was an actor there and she used to tell me that when, it, one time she dressed up and uh, they had tunnels that led directly across the street there was a a uh, National Guard center where the National Guard could get into the hospital if there was ever a breakout it was a very large campus and they always talk about the evil scientists doing you know whatever psychologists doing crazy things to people and locking people up who shouldn't have been locked up but she was dressed up in her in her outfit and just walking around the outside when uh, a couple of Satanists who used to live in the tunnels started chasing her and tried to, I guess, assault her or whatever. She had to run back to the rest of the group, like where everybody else was, so that she didn't get whatever they were going to do to her. And she lived in the neighborhood of this place. And it's, it's no longer there. It's been bulldozed since then. Um but it always was one of my favorite haunted houses when I was a little kid because a future girlfriend of mine who I didn't know at the time ended up being almost assaulted by Satanists who lived in the tunnels. So that's the story you're going to get from me. True story, folks. True story. I have no evidence of it, but it's a true story. Let me know what haunted houses you guys have seen, which ones have you gone to. I will definitely check them out in the comments. I, uh, I knew the U.S. would have the most and best haunted houses, except for Spookers in Auckland, New Zealand. But let me know if you've been to any of those places. Let me know if you've been to the ones in Pennsylvania, if there's some secret hidden ones that I don't know about. There's a lot of farm ones around where I am. We have haunted farms with, uh, like, children of the corn stuff, I guess, and corn mazes. But let me know what you guys think, and uh, I enjoyed this. I hope you did, too. Thank you for watching this long. I do love you guys. Um, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, all that great stuff. Love all y'all, but I'm on to the next one. Thanks for catching the video. Be sure to join our channel to get the education you deserve. Make sure you check out our shorts, live streams, and catch us on all the socials. Don't forget to like and subscribe.